So, um, welcome everybody uh, to uh, the uh, undergraduate debate and economic uh, events day. I, I hope everybody uh, has been enjoying the events that we've had today, and this is a nice way uh, to wrap up uh, the semester. Um, and so, I guess this uh, in this debate we'll be debating whether to reduce the work week, right? And we have our pro team over here and our con team um, over here. Um, I don't know if Grace is going to, and our uh, moderator is Grace Davis from the undergraduate economics class. I don't know, Grace, if you're going to ask people to introduce themselves or if, whether I should uh, do it. Okay, so why don't we have everybody uh, from the pro and con team introduce themselves? Oh yeah, I guess. So why don't you introduce yourself when you come up here the first time? Because I guess we need the microphone to have for everybody to hear. So when you come up um, the first time, then then uh, uh, introduce yourself, and um, I'll be uh, judging the debate along with Irina Bobu from the economics department and also Chris Boone from the economics department, so I'm really looking forward uh, to hearing what you all have to say, and I think now uh, Grace will come up and will tell us the rules of the, oops, of the debate. Hello, I'm Grace Davis. I'm going to be moderating the debate today. Um, so the formatting of the debate is starting with 15-minute opening statements from either side, starting with the affirmative. Um, we'll then have a five-minute break for each team to collect their thoughts and move on to a 16-minute back and forth, broken up into four pieces um, with four minutes for the affirmative, four minutes negative, and then back and forth for that amount of time. Um, I think we should give them a brief break and then have, uh, let's say two minute break, and then a 10 minute Q&A from the judges where the judges at this point will have seen a lot so they'll you know, be able to drill down into things that they want to hear more from, get maybe a, a side to clarify a particular point, so that'll be 10 minutes, and then we'll move on to two minute closing statements, one from either side. Um, so that's the formatting of the debate. Um, I guess, to, okay, would you guys, um, for introducing yourselves, would you guys rather do that, how tight are you in terms of time for the opening statements? Like, are you exactly to 15 minutes or is a little, do you have a little bit? Okay, then yeah, I guess we can just keep the introductions in the opening statement if it's not too, like, ruinous for people. <laughs> All right, um, so we can start with the open, uh, sorry, we can start with the affirmative side. Um, whenever they feel ready, then we um, can begin that time. It's 15 minutes and uh, I'll start the timer. I will give you guys a five minute warning and I'll give you guys a one minute warning and then I'll cut you off if you're still talking. <laughs> Hello, we are the affirmative for why we should transition to a four day work week. Workers all throughout the United States are fed up with being with the status quo right now. They are tired and overworked. Levels of stress are shown to be high while happiness is low and uh, well-being and happiness is low and productiv productivity is being stopped by burnout. And people all around agree that we have difficulty ba balancing life and work now more than ever. That was what was happening in the early 1900s and see that all of you thought I was referring to the current day. Yes, we are dealing with the same problems that we did 100 years ago. Now, how did they fix it back then? The solution they came up with to these problems in the 1900s was transitioning from a six-day work week to a five-day work week. People's work-life balance became far, were far more balanced, which actually re, uh, resulted in productivity increasing and the pay to stay the same. Uh, but times are changing and these problems of the past have resurfaced. Our history has set a precedent for us. We must take the solution of the past one step further and tr transition to a uh, four day work week. Given how we transitioned once before, we can see this debate is not a question of whether our economy can uh, sustain a transition, but whether or not uh, 
of four days is better than five days in answering the problems we face. To answer this question, we will cover topics including economic theories we all love as economists, real life examples, productivity, and more. Thank you, Taylor. My name is Wes, and I'm going to talk about theory here. English economist John Maynard Keynes argued that in progressive countries, the standard of living is going to increase kind of rapidly over time. And this was a prediction that he gave back in the year 1930. And his time period was 100 years. That was the example he gave, because he was looking and talking about his grandchildren in the future. And he believed that people would still want to do some work at this time, but they would be content with 15 hours a week. And the standard of living was going to have increased tremendously. And he thinks that he, his idea was that people would have, be, have already accomplished so much and the standard of living for future generations has already been raised signif so significantly that why are we still working as hard as we did to get to this point? Um, reducing the number of hours people spend working a job also allows for more adequate time for people to complete life's tasks with reduced stress levels. Today, mental health is on the decline among young people, largely, and is becoming one of the more pressing issues facing not only our country, but most of the world. Stress is a huge factor playing into depression and anxiety, and many people today point to their jobs as their main stressors in their day-to-day -day lives. The point to life is liberty and the pursuit of happiness, and we are seeing work becoming the main culprit and chipping away at people's happiness. Since the year 2000, we've noticed that happiness and well-being have been on the decline, this is according to the World Happiness Report. And we want happiness to increase along with our increased standard of living, but what's going on right now in society is we're seeing the complete opposite of this. Obviously, there are other factors at play, such as social media and the state of politics right now, but stress in the workplace is really not looking great these days. Um, according to the American Institute of Stress, 62% of workers experience high stress levels, and some feel that they aren't in control and feel fatigued. This is diametrically opposed to the 5% saying that they have low stress levels while in the workplace. These numbers speak for themselves. People are too stressed at their jobs, and this excess stress is deteriorating mental health on a large scale. Scaling back the number of hours people spend at work will have large positive impacts on stress reduction and society overall. And mental health is something that is being closely paid attention to now and has become an important factor for decision making of any kind. One small step that we can take right now is to address these growing problems to adopt a shorter work week. Hello, my name is Lee Sutherland. Um, the five-day, 40-hour work week is outdated and has proven to have ne negative impacts on the employees and the environment. The five-day work week has a negative impact on the environment since many jobs are still in person and the transportation to, fi uh, to work five days a week puts a strain on the environment. Seen from research done by UMass Amherst um, Political Economy Research Institute, a 10% reduction of hours causes a 12.1 decrease in ecological footprint, a 14.6 decrease in carbon footprint, and a 4.2 decrease in carbon emissions. The five-day week work week also isn't fair for those who are low income and have to work more than one job to make ends meet. Um, they are either not able to work multiple jobs, or if they do, they have no time for anything else. We are also seeing that more schools are starting to pilot the four-day school week, and as this is becoming more common, then the four-day work week will be, make more sense since parents won't have to pay an extra day of child support if they aren't there. Um, perhaps the biggest problem with the five-day work week is burnout. Burnout is defined as a state of mental, physical, and emotional exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. I'm sure many people have experienced that, especially with finals week coming up. Um, Stress from work uh, perpetrated this and having to do the same thing five, five days, 40 hours a week causes high level of stress and loss of motivation, as well as not having enough time in the week to do hobbies, have personal time, and family time. Since, and this can make burnout worse since you feel that your job isn't worth um, what you're giving up. Um, mental health awareness is also becoming more prevalent in the workplace, and high levels of stress can cause more mental health issues such as depression and anxiety. All of these factors cause high level of stress and burnout, accumulating into lower productivity levels, which is bad for companies and the economy. Hello, my name is Mike, and I'd like to uh, make the empirical case for the four day work week. So, first, I want to emphasize that um, the four day work week, which it means like reducing the work week in general from, say, like to um, usually 32 hours, it's not just some crazy idea, but it has been um, tested many times where um, companies and governments in um, different parts of the world have um, agreed to like um, have their employees work less hours 
per week and for the same pay and we have like results from them and it's almost been universally positive for mo almost all the firms which um, have participated in them. First, a notable experiment occurred in Sweden where 80 nurses in an elderly care home adopted a six hour workday. And the trial was a success and it led to improved physical and mental health for the majority of nurses involved. We also see evidence from New Zealand where the financial services firm Petro Perpetual Guardian instituted a four day work week for its employees across the company and found improvements in a variety of organizational factors, including um, including uh, improved work-life balance for employees and uh, less stress. The trial was so successful that the CEO of Perpetual Garden, Andrew Barnes, is actually one of the um, leading advocates worldwide for reducing the work week, which goes to show that it's not just like um, workers who are advocating for this, but it's also um, CEOs of companies, right? And another trial occurred in Iceland, which I know I think uh, Lee is gonna talk about next, but it was successful too. And one, another one in the, um, the U.S., which involved 41 companies and 988 participants, found increases in employee satisfaction and company support for the measures. Uh, here, you can see that, um, that the trial, as the trial went on, uh, factors such as burnout, uh, physical health, uh, mental health, life satisfaction improved. And the trial over, overall received a 9.1 out of 10 rating among, among employees and 8.7 out of 10 rating among companies. Finally, the largest trial to date in the United Kingdom involved 61 companies and 2,900 workers across a variety of, a variety of industries, which experienced an overall four hour drop per week and found that 39% um, of employees reported less stress, 71% reported reduced levels of burnout well, the companies experienced 35, uh, a 35% increase in revenue while the tri trial went on and a 57% drop in employee turnover. Crucially, the study rejects the idea that reducing the work week only works in certain professions, such as, like, say, white collar jobs, right? But it highlights the flexibility of how of reducing the work week. It, it notes that each com quote each company designed a policy tailored to its particular particular industry, organizational challenges apartmental structures and work culture. A range of four day work weeks were therefore developed. Furthermore, based off the success of these trials, corporate America is very receptive to the idea. A KPMG survey found that 30% of large corporations are experimenting with reducing the work week. So to conclude my part, the evidence for the reducing the work week exists and it's pretty strong. Um, one of our group members couldn't make it due to the stomach bugs. So I'll be presenting her research. Um, contrary to conventional opinion, longer hours don't ne necessarily equate to increased productivity. In fact, studies have shown that prolonged work hours often lead to burnout, decreased morale, and diminished efficiency. By condensing the work week into four days, we give employees the gift of time, a pre precious resource that can be invested in rest, rejuvenation, and personal development. With extra days off, employees return to work feeling uh, energized, ready to tackle challenges, more clear and refreshed. They have the opportunity to purchase hobbies, pursue hobbies, engage in physical activity, or simply relax and recharge. This does not only enhance their overall well-being, but also fosters a more positive and productive work environment. Moreover, a four-day work week promotes work-life balance, a concept that has become increasingly elusive in today's fast-paced world. By giving employees an additional day to spend with their families, pursue personal interests, or attend errands, we empower them to lead more fulfilling lives outside of the office. This in turn leads to greater job satisfaction, improved mental health, and reduced turnover rates. According to CNN in Iceland, beginning in 2015, 2,500 public sector workers started working 35 to 36 hour weeks with no change in pay. Careful research found positive effects all, over, all around. Workers had less stress, more energy, better work-life balance, as well as steady or improved productivity. But perhaps most importantly, a 40 work week isn't just about working less, it's about working smarter. With fewer days in the office, employees are incentivized to prioritize tasks, streamline processes, and eliminate inefficiencies. This encourages innovation, creativity, and strategic thinking, all of which are essential ingredients for long-term success in today's competitive landscape. Okay. All right, so that was, yeah, give them a round of applause. All right, so that was the affirmative side. Um, 
I'll just read out the names of the participants right now. <laughs> this is, wait, is this on? Is this working? It doesn't seem like not it's... working well. It stopped working well. <laughs> oh, well, that's not great. I guess I'll just try to project my voice. Um, yeah, so that was the affirmative side um, with Wesley Wayland, Michael Weigel, Lee Sutherland, Taylor Quigley, and Emily Ono, who could not make it today but contributed to her research. So that was the affirmative side. And for the negative side, we have Cole Hartford, Charlotte Lucas, Alex Huang, Gabriel Mock, Garen Sakyan, and Aditha Anand. Anand? Anand. And they are the negative side. Uh, they're about to do their opening statement. Um, I'll give you guys a second to arrange, you know, get your slides up, uh, figure things out, and let me know, and I'll start a 15 minute timer. Okay. The four day work week sounds amazing. It is a flashy headline and a concept most people are immediately on board with. However, despite the great marketing around the idea, a four day work week is not a cure all solution. It is riddled with issues as it does not work for all industries, exacerbates inequalities does not help with employee stress, and does not increase productivity. We are not better off implementing a widespread four-day work week. One of the biggest issues with implementing a widespread four-day work week is that it fails to acknowledge the diverse array of industries in which people work. Few industries can implement a four-day work week without significant staffing issues and disruptions to output productivity and social institutions. These hur the hurdles these industries would face make implementing a four-day work week impractical. For example, AllCap, an engineering and industrial supplies company, struggled to operate efficiently while experimenting with the four-day work week because of the business, their business model is based on irregular intervals. Firms like AllCap wait for customers to place orders and then manufacture the, and directly, the directly ordered materials. Through their trial with the four-day work week, AllCap's window of business shrunk, shrunk drastically. Employees struggled with, ex with four extremely busy day work days and did not experience the intended and positive effects of having a shorter week. When another fir firm, Citizens Advice, experimented with the four-day work week, they found issues with staffing. The firm relies on contact centers to interact with its customers. Mondays and Fridays are usually their busiest days. During the trial, the company had to invest in almost three extra employees' worth of money to keep the up with the four-day work week. In most cases, firms such as restaurants and emergency services, fewer work hours would mean more workers must be hired to compensate a move that would be impossible depending on the abundance of workers and the cost of hiring additional workers. Industries open seven days a week seven days a week require around the clock staffing and are often subjected to the solution and are often subjected to the solution that they could simply cut their workers hours and make up the difference through hiring to adapt a four-day work week but as we said before this is not practical consequently a drive research survey found that 62 percent of businesses stated that implementing a four-day work week would require a reduction in employee salaries and reduction in salaries would harm the economy as people would have less money to spend Additionally, we need to think about schools. There's, this is another profession where the four-day work week has been experimented with. Currently, there are over 900 districts in the US that utilize a four-day work week. The intended outcome was employee retention, and while they have been able to retain teachers, the program places undue stress and burden on the families of the district. Most people are not working the four-day work week, and having the extra day off now presents a new need for childcare. While well, the district offered childcare for, for the extra day for $30 a day per kid, this adds up to an additional $1,080 of of money per child each year. This is simply not feasible for many families. Both these examples do not even mention the elephant in the room, the white collar and blue collar split. The four day work week only appears to work well in the white collar industries. Those in salary jobs are able to experience the luxury of an extra day off, even if that puts more strain on their jobs. But for those unable to secure such a position, they might just be looking at reduced hours or not even getting to participate in a four day work week at all. On this front, the issue of hourly jobs rears its head. Many jobs operate on, a, on an hourly wage, and with each worker being paid on the amount of hours they work, people working these jobs will lose out on valuable opportunities to earn money. The New York Times Magazine pointed out that when one can hardly pay their bill, the absence of full-time work is often experienced as a deprivation rather than a reprieve. It continues on to point out that while a reduction in hours for a salary employee might be seen as a labor victory, it leaves the hourly laborer with both less pay and a more unpredictable schedule. This isn't even mentioning how there are other ways that companies can maximize employee efficiency, giving the option to work remotely, more paid mental health days, and a limit on what employees are expected to do beyond their working hours are all options that companies can consider instead of a four-day work week. So whether it's maximizing the efficiency of businesses or making sure employees are at their best, a four-day work week is just a mandate that many industries won't be able to adapt to. 
Although at a glance it may seem like a four-day work week is beneficial to society, the reality is far different. A four-day work week would actually cause workers to have more stress and fatigue, and it also carries negative health consequences. As stated in Forbes magazine in 2023, it doesn't address the core issue of how we work, just how many days we do it. Eliminating Fridays does not solve the issue of constant interruptions um, and days full of meetings, emails, messages, pings, and texts. It is our work habits and the distractions that come with them that contribute to burnout. While reducing work hours may delay burnout onset, uh, ignoring the fundamental problems with our work culture and daily habits will inevitably ensure we remain on the same stressful path. Truly, uh, if we implement a four-day work week, we're walking a very fine line between an extra day of relaxation and increases to stress and fatigue that would overall lead to a decrease in productivity or even lead to some dangerous consequences. Uh, professor Dembe, a professor of health at Ohio State, uh, asserts that a four-day work week leads to a 37% higher risk of industrial accident. And all this assumes that we can even implement a four-day work week in the first place. The sad reality is that the overall number of job posts advertising a four-day work week remains low, clocking in only around 0.3% uh, of total posts. According to Harvard Business Review, experts seem to think that a four-day work week is not going to be implemented anytime soon. Three UPenn experts uh, said, it's a nice idea that could take root in small parts of the industry, but they don't hold out hope for widespread change. Sure, if you cherry pick the best studies, a four-day work week sounds great. But when you realize the reality of health concerns and the small scale that a four-day work week is being tested on, it doesn't sound as good. Hi, uh, I'm Aditya Anand, and my point is about, my first point is about loneliness. Uh, a specific stressor that can be exacerbated by a four-day work week is loneliness and social isolation. It's a well-known fact that America is dealing with loneliness at epidemic levels, with the 19th U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy saying that it's the greatest public health crisis we face. Studies by health insurance provider Cigna in 2020 found out that more than three out of five Americans uh, deal with considerable levels of loneliness, showing a 13% increase from 2018. Further, the highest levels of loneliness were found in Gen Z, the same generation that would be greatly affected by a change of four-day work week. The study, linked, uh, the study linked loneliness to having negative impacts on mental and physical health, with the PLOS Medical Journal stating that loneliness was comparable to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Further, new workplace norms because of COVID with the virtual and hybrid work environments reduces the time individuals spend in work in general, which on account average for one third of an individual's lifetime. If one were to add a four day work week on top of this, the impact it would have on individual social and relationships loss because of it could not, is incalculable. With loneliness already being such a big issue in America and the rest of the world, actions like a four day work week have to be considered with the impact it might have on the people it's uh, trying so hard to help. The second idea is putting the idea of a four-day work week itself into the current economic system that we're in. The truth is we live in a capitalist society across the world. Employees are seen as individuals to produce enough revenue in order to generate a profit for the company such organization they work for. As such, ideas like a four-day work week would only pass if they don't hinder the profit that can be generated by the employees. In such an idea, corporations would lose an entire day of labor for their workers. And as such, would find ways to recuperate them in the four days that the workers now actually work on. This could mean more managers to make workers more productive. This could mean assigning more work on the days they do work. And in the case of virtual work days, pushing the boundaries of work to make employees work at times when they would not normally be asked to. A study by LA-based staffing firm Robert Half found that people in virtual work environments were more likely to feel pressured to work on weekends, work more than eight hours a day, and were unable to fully disconnect from work. An issue we saw a lot during COVID as work has now entered the home. A divide that used to exist, a clear divide that used to exist back in the day has now been blurred for many people. Ideas like a four day work week could very possibly lead to the same negative outcomes for those it is implemented on. In time leading to work culture, the same or even worse than what we have right now. The fact of the matter is we are here to debate if a four day work week is a good idea. And because of this, I don't think this is the, I, in the and because of this, it must be considered in the lens of the present day reality, in which I don't think a four day work week is the way forward. Our next point concerns a reality that has been already dawning on the labor market for the past decade, particularly since COVID. With more companies switching to virtual and hybrid models of work, workers are less and less required to engage in face-to-face -face interactions with their colleagues and leadership.
The negative consequences of this will only be magnified by reducing the number of days they show up. What are these consequences? Firstly, is less spontaneous interactions. A reduced presence in the office limits opportunities for casual, unplanned conversations. Such interactions are often the seeds of innovation, spontaneous discussions that lead to collaboration across departments or the exchange of expertise. Such organic collaborations could become rare. Moreover, such unplanned engagements play a vital role in building and nurturing professional relationships. Trust and chemistry are developed through these data -day exchanges, which in turn contribute to a more cohesive and productive workforce. In the absence of these spontaneous interactions, employees may find it more challenging to establish the depth of rapport necessary for effective teamwork and innovation. Second, rushed work is bad work. Moreover, the compression of the work week may lead to rushed tasks. Under pressure to complete the same amount of work in less time, the output of quality may suffer, leading to suboptimal work results. This can affect client satisfaction and company reputation in the long term. Lastly, I'd like to talk about that three-day weekends are kind of too big of a break for us. We might have three, four, or five three-day weekends throughout the current calendar year, and once we get back to the office on Monday mornings, it might be kind of tough to get back to the uh, way of things. So having a three-day weekend every single week is actually not really that good, good of an idea. All right, good afternoon. Next, a reduced in-office schedule also weakens the connections between leadership and employees, leading to a cascade of negative effects. With fewer days in the office or in, a, in any other workplace even remote, there are less opportunities for real-time feedback, mentorship, and career development. This results in misalignments not only within teams, but also between different levels of leadership. In a four-day work week, there are fewer days for leadership to gather input from employees, discuss options, and make decisions. This leads to slower decision-making processes, which can be frustrating for employees who may need quick responses or guidance to move forward with their own work. Reduced interactions can also lead to a perception among employees that leadership is out of touch with their needs and challenges, eroding trust and morale within the organization. Monitoring employee performance and providing timely feedback can be more challenging with a shorter work week, impacting employee development and overall productivity. Perhaps a manifestation of employees having lost commitment to their employer or leadership is the phenomenon of dual employment. With the rise of remote jobs, people are increasingly taking on more than one full-time job often two full-time jobs. Now, as people find themselves with an extra day off, some may be tempted to covertly take on such additional jobs. This trend dilutes focus and commitment on the company mission, impacting productivity and loyalty to the primary employer. Even worse, when the companies are in competition. A Reddit community, Reddit is a popular online forum called Are Overemployed, has over 300,000 members, ranking in the top 1% of Reddit communities. It shares methods and ideas on dealing with being a full-time employee in two different companies. And often, an essential component to this is making sure the employers do not catch on. Many users sharing advice and stories about nearly getting caught. Moreover, an essential component to the disconnection between employee and leadership is poor communication. As we've shown, communication, is, communication will clearly be affected in a four-day work week. A study published by Forbes Advisor shows that in-person conversation is a strongly preferred method of communication for in-person office employees. As you can see here, the blue bar strikes is quite striking. There is simply no substitute for face-to-face -face conversations, whether with respect to human connection or workplace productivity. A day less than a week to chat, talk about personal and professional matters will undoubtedly lead to less of these types of interactions conversations. New day, people come in fresh and open to talk. In addition, this same study has shown that digital communication, which is likely to increase with less days for teams and employees to interact in person, is a significant cause of burnout. Now, in conclusion, you see this right here. In conclusion, the concept of a four-day work week may seem attractive, but its implementation would have significant drawbacks and is not suitable for every industry. It would exacerbate issues like classism, disrupt industries reliant on traditional schedules, and hinder sectors requiring high responsiveness and innovation. Concerns about hourly wages, increased stress, and decreased productivity also point to the four-day work week 
being a bad idea. It's a bad idea for worker satisfaction, for Time. individual company success, and the economy as a whole. Yeah. Okay, thank you to the negative side. We'll now give both teams five minutes to collect their thoughts and take some notes. Um, and then after that, we're going to go into our rebuttal section, which will be four four-minute segments of the teams responding to each other's arguments. So whenever the affirmative side is ready, they can come up to the podium and begin their rebuttals. OK, so I think the opposition does make a good point about that work culture does have a serious problem in this country. But I think uh, the evidence shows, and we've made the case, that, um, that, the for that reducing the work week is a step in the right direction. So first of all, I'd like to address the point that this is going to result in, a, um, in less pay for workers. Well, what we're explicitly advocating is that um, workers get paid the same for less hours. And this seems to have no impact no negative impact on productivity according to the studies we have cited. And also, I, I recall um, Charlotte was talking about some companies where um, uh, the, the four-day work week or um, reducing the work week didn't work. Well, it, not every policy is perfect. Like every single policy has a, neg has a negative effect on someone. It's just about, but the goal of um, implementing a policy is to support more people than pe people are getting, than number of people getting harmed. And the four-day work week surely does that. And it has um, wide popularity uh, from the trials we have cited. And I, about it only um, it not working in blue-collar professions, well, the US trial uh, involved companies in a variety of industries, such as healthcare, marketing, entertainment, engineering, construction, and it was pretty successful all around. And it's a very flexible proposal, too, because um, companies can um, design a work schedule that fits their business needs, right? And I'd also like to um, touch on a couple points. I, the opposition made a point that um, a study from Ohio State found that um, there is a, that a re, uh, increased risk of industrial accidents by the four-day work week. They were talking about a four-day work week with, um, with um, they were not talking about reducing the work week in the way they were advocating. They were talking about a work schedule where people would work equal hours for, um, they would work the same hours but in less days. And also, um, the, the graph you showed about only 20% of employees left their job because of, um, because of um, their, um, be, because, uh, because of um, the t long hours. Well, where else are they gonna go? No, most companies don't have a 35 hour work week or 32 hour work week where they can go to. We would like to uh, make a few points about their graphical information and how in a way they lie to you. Uh, in a bit, one of their slides, they had three graphs up and on the left was, they're trying to make a point about how loneliness has been spiking but they showed a graph of grade school students. How does that relate to the four-day work week at all? Another one that I'd like to point out is, you might remember they had a graph of many categories and a circle showing you what they wanted to show you, but that uh, people working too much is increasing stress. But right above that actually showed that more people are getting stressed out from childcare. The four-day work week would allow more time for families to watch over their kids so this problem wouldn't exist. Thank you. Now we will have time for the negative. Yeah, <laughs> a round of applause, sure. Now we will open it up to the negative side for their first four minute uh, portion of the back and forth. Okay, so first of all, in response to their argument about uh, the benefits in terms of stress levels, so You cited a study that showed a clear co correlation between less work, less amount of work, and uh, reduced stress levels, right? Now, fundamentally, the question is whether what the causal mechanism is there, whether a reduction in the amount of hours actually caused that reduction in stress, or whether there's something about reducing the hours worked per week that also leads, in some way, to a reduction in stress. 
from the evidence we showed you about communication being a primary, like, primary cause of bad communication being a primary cause of burnout, we uh, claim that it's not the amount of work that matters, it's poor leadership that matters, it's bad communication between employees and their leaders that matters, that fundamentally determines stress levels, not one day less. I just wanted to touch on the idea that like uh, mental health issues are exacerbated by the five day work week. Um, for a lot of people, uh, work is like their main source of human connection um, and social interaction. So by cutting one day off the work week, uh, that would most likely actually negatively impact uh, mental health. So you guys mentioned how the five day work week is not fair for low income families, but I think the four day work week will actually be less fair for the low income families because they are, most low income families are working minimum wage jobs, right? So their salaries are not going to increase with the four day work week. And um, cut, putting a cap on the hours they can work is just gonna make them a lot more stressed, um, just decrease the quality of their life. And also they're gonna try and squeeze in five days of worth of work in four days. So but they might be working nighttime shifts. So actually, um, you guys were saying how they can spend more time with family. That's actually gonna work. Like It's gonna backfire, I think. So I wanna to respond to your point about the grass about loneliness that I brought up, or I put on the slides. The one on the left about grade school children was supposed to show that how loneliness was already an issue existing in grade school children, and changed like a four day work week could increase the issue even more. Uh, the graph on the middle was to showcase how the current picture of loneliness in America, where 15 to 18 year olds have a one, one out of four of 15 to 18 year olds have levels of loneliness that are considerable, or they feel very lonely. And the last graph on the right was to showcase the impacts of loneliness because of COVID. Uh, the last point that uh, Colin said would like to make would be about uh, would be about the blue collar worker point that they keep saying, and about how we actually have studies that are quite flexible. I would like to see the actual industries in it instead of a general oh these are some hypothetical blue collar industries and they somehow work. We have yeah 13 seconds left on the clock um, for that segment, so. If that's all you guys have to say, I give them a round of applause. We've been doing rounds of applause for everything. <laughs> all right, we'll give um, four more minutes to the affirmative and then four minutes to the negative after them. Um, then we'll open it up to Q&A. So let's hear the negative, I mean affirmative. So it was mentioned by the opposing side that a four day work week would not work for both white and blue collar industries and I'm here to say, I'm here to ask why would you believe that if this country transitioned from a six day work week to a five day work week across the board and we're just fine now. And we now see problems with that model and we want to make changes. It's going to be difficult. There is going to be a transitional period and not every policy is gonna have 100% success. Some policies will fail. There are going to be fundamental problems with staffing, with pay, with hiring, with firing, with any everything, adopting this new model. It's not gonna work overnight. But addressing these fundamental problems, the workers have spoken. No one comes home at the end of the day and says, I wish I spent more time in the office. I really wanna keep being stressed. They come home and say, I hate my job, or I'm very stressed, I'm, I'm losing my mind. They, they are spending too much time in the office. It's very obvious, no one wants to spend more time. So spending less time would have positive impacts on their stress levels. And it was mentioned that experts believe that this is a bad idea. Experts can think that this is a bad idea. In the 1940s, experts, our medical experts thought smoking was fine. Smoking cigarettes was normal in doctor's offices until over time there were studies done and then we figured out it's bad for you. Even the experts figured that out that they were wrong because it was just something they think. And having a three-day weekend, I do want to address, having a three-day weekend is not going to cause issues in the long run for people coming in to work on Monday after a long weekend because that long weekend will eventually become the norm. A two-day weekend was a long weekend back then when we used to only have one day off. 
So having a three-day weekend and as opposed to a two-day weekend, yes, will be crazy in the beginning, but it will become normal very quickly as the industry adapts. And I also did want to mention one more thing. So you were talking about stress and how workers are leaving from stress. So if workers are saying they are very stressed at work and they work too much, how is working too much not the cause of their stress, if this is what they're saying? Um, I also wanted to counteract your point because you offered um, remote work and mental health days as a solution, um, but then you countered that by later saying that remote work causes people to take their work home with them and how remote work actually isn't as helpful. So. Okay, so first I'd like to briefly touch on the point about um, that our studies not showing a causal mechanism. Well, one of our, the Sweden study I mentioned before actually did and found that the four-day work week, it allows for other like interventions that um, are shown to have a positive effect on mental health and enables these to happen. Now, a response to, um, to Alex about an example. Well, I, I have an example right here of a manufacturing company implementing their own unique um, unique working schedule, which it's basically called the um, protected model, where um, our staff like take their take um, a day off, but like in some circumstances, like staff can be called in, in like usually like emergencies circumstances, but it's um, staff still um, work uh, reduced hours and. Quote, the manager of a small-scale manufacturer used a staggering model recognized that the business could be vulnerable in, a, in an emergency Sorry. on days with lower staff coverage. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. Now we'll have the final segment of our back and forth with one more four-minute segment from the negative side. So just to complete that elaboration on causal mechanism, perhaps judges are interested in their questions. Um, and, and that too. But what we suggest is that it's not the amount of hours that, le that leads to these decreased levels of stress. It could be just less exposure to leadership, to bad leadership that is, for example, or any other factors that you have with more amount of hours worked. It's not the amount of hours themselves. Another point brought up was that with less days, workers would be incentivized to work more efficiently, uh, just allocate their time better. Um, we claim that's just speculation. I mean, um, it seems very counterintuitive to claim that you as a worker, you're being, you're being given more work. Okay, your response to that is, let me become more efficient rather than you being, why am I given more work now? So those are two responses. So one thing the positive side addressed is uh, my bar graph, um, which says uh, because of childcare issues, um, it, that's a top reason for uh, US workers leaving a job. But um, a four day work week would likely lead to more childcare issues because um, I mean, if schools still operated on a five-day schedule, whereas workers operate on a four-day schedule, it would just create like a logistical nightmare where you can't pick your kids up from school in time and daycare. Um, and also, um, working too many hours is comparable to working too few hours for the reasons that people left a job. I would like to thank the affirmative side for giving the manufacturing example. I am pleased with that. I would, however, like to stress something that I think I would like to be more elaborated more, which is, does the affirmative side believe that we should establish a for a forty work week general or business wise? Because you've been talking about, because yes, the manufacturing company works well with their own policy, but that's their own policy. That's not every single industry. And another point, which is about how no one, everyone, about complaining to work. I would like to bring up the fact that pe there are people who are work multiple jobs. We've already talked about this with the R class overworked and how they are sharing tips and strategies to avoid being caught by their employers for working multiple jobs. Okay. All right. Thank you. Negative side. Amazing. After the judges deliberate, we'll open it up to a 10-minute Q&A. 
Okay, so we have some questions. Um, we'll each come up here and ask a couple of questions. Maybe we'll try to keep it to three minutes each so that for each question. So I just had a couple of questions. Uh, so for the pro side, um, you argued that you know this change would be good for both workers and employers. And so if that's the case, I suppose my question is why aren't people doing this already? Or to some extent, you said that some people are doing this already, but if it's really good for both, it's a win-win for both workers and firms, then you know, to the extent that that's the case, why aren't they um, doing it already? A related question I have for sort of both sides is what sort of, you talked a lot about which would be better, but what sort of laws and policies um, would you uh, advocate to support um, your position? And since I asked the uh, uh, pro question, I also want to ask the con question, which is, do your arguments actually imply that we should increase uh, the length of the work week? Or if not, then what are the reasons why it would be bad to, to, to increase the length? And do those reasons not argue for, for decreasing the length? So those are my questions. There's the first question really quick. Uh, why is this not being implemented yet if we believe there are going to be benefit, large benefits to this? And our response is, it's because this is a shift in the status quo. This is not something, like I was saying earlier, this is not something that just happens overnight. And we have brought up case studies where companies and countries are actually adopting this new model and they are sharing their research with us. It's going to take time for everybody to be on board with this because it is a huge change and people are resistant to change. That's just innate human quality. And the shift from the status quo is, this is shifting from working five days, which is the traditional work week, to four. That's going to take some time because there are, there are a lot of professions where, like hospitals, you can't just close a hospital. You can't close a police station. There are going to be professions where this isn't going to happen, but it's going to take time. So it's not happening with everybody, but it's slowly happening in small increments. And it's just getting the ball rolling. It's kind of like a, the snowball effect because we're seeing positive results in all these, most of these studies. To address what like policies you would advocate for the um, Fair Labor Standards Act that was amended in 1940 that set the 40 hour work week and two day weekend as like the official mandate of the United States, that's what the negative side would have, um, we would advocate to keep that and maintain that as it is. Just adding to that, we'd say that in some manner, laws and policies can encompass or manifest, uh, bring about good leadership, good communication, good, uh, good work culture, those things that actually matter for prevention of burnout or a good workplace environment. And, and so in that case, really that should, like laws and policies should, we should prioritize uh, what would actually bring about a good work culture. And uh, as we've shown, reducing the work week by one day will not do that. Quite the opposite. Oh yeah, and uh, should we increase the length from, from uh, the work week back to six? Well, a six day work week, reducing that to five is fundamentally different than reducing a five day work week to four days. Two days is double of one day. So just the marginal gains you get is, is quite, it's a very, quite a very different situation, the change you're talking about. Um, in the interest of time, I think we should move to the next question. Hi. Uh, both sides br uh, brought really uh, good arguments uh, and summarizing all of that, so for, uh, um, affirmative side, you said that uh, it would um, four days, uh, four day week would increase productivity, uh, happiness, uh, less stress. Uh, so what do you think about uh, like uh, making three days, uh, three day week instead. So would they uh, increase even more productivity, increase happiness, uh, um, decrease stress? Uh, and um, to your uh, to the negative side, um, I have uh, the, the op opposite question. So would all your arguments like would it uh, decrease loneliness, uh, increase salaries, and uh, etc. Um, if people would work six days instead. 
So would it uh, would be even better? Would they be happier? And uh, another uh, very important thing, uh, you both, like both sides, uh, you both uh, spoke about uh, happiness, but your perspective on that uh, were completely different, uh, like opposite, I would say, not, not just different. Uh, so Pro said, said that uh, the less people work, the happier they are. Uh, the uh, negative side said, the more people work, the happier they are. So uh, can you say that people are happiest ever when they work four days a week uh, and when, when they work five days a week? Or they would be even happier if they work three days a week and even happier if they work six days a week? And um, like additional, um, question uh, to the negative side about loneliness. Uh, why uh, people who um, spend more time at work necessarily uh, less lonely than, pe than people who spend more time at home with family, with friends, uh, especially uh, work could be in person but could be remote. Uh, so could you please explain more about this uh, argument? Thanks. So responding to the first question about loneliness or happiness increased with six days. Now, for a lot of people, six days would, in decrease or would indeed decrease their loneliness or happiness, uh, increase their happiness. But for a lot of people, especially people with families, they have friends at work, that's a significant community to them, but they equally have their family at home. So increasing that to six would equally not, not be a good idea for them. So a blanket solution for the whole economy, switching it to six days is not a good idea either. Some people do happen to be happier with six days. Some people happen to be happier with four days. Uh, we don't deny that there's cases where four days is a better solution, but applying that to the whole economy has, is just not a good idea as we show. So for your point about loneliness and how that impacts, uh, how it's impacted by five day work week, the last question you had, it's more about how in the workplace, because it accounts for about one third of your overall lifetime, um, being in work, it's kind of a way to build relationships. So if you were to reduce, reduce that to four weeks and have three days at home, it kind of doesn't allow you to develop the relationships you normally would have if you were working five days a week. And with the current five day model, you still have eight hours. After you work, you still come back home to your family and friends. You have the weekend with your family and friends. So kind of that balance in the five day work week is something that I think we advocate for. And we feel like moving towards four day work week would not really improve the loneliness situation. I think it would very easily can make it worse. Just to address some of your points, um, uh, we're not implying that like working more means people are happier. We're just um, we're implying that like it's the main method of social connection for a lot of people. So by cutting that off, I mean sure some people have families, but not everyone. Some people have to go home to uh, just an empty house, which is pretty depressing. And also um, like for the whole like six days. Um, argument uh, we're not like we're saying that we should stick to the traditional five-day schedule so six days four days it doesn't matter it's we want to stick to tradition um, yeah. um, on how we define happiness for the firm side I believe we look at it through the lens of leisure being a main source of happiness where uh, a survey in the United States found that leisure does play a significant role in affecting individual happiness. Um, and then your question about why don't we just make it a three-day work week? Um, we think that it would be too intensive from going from a five to a three, but we don't know yet in the future, depending on productivity and technology, because we've gone from six to five, five to four, so maybe in the future we could go from four to three, just not right now from going <coughs> five to three. All right, thank you. We'll now open it up to, I think, the final question. Yeah. Yeah, we have time. I mean, yeah, it's, if you guys are okay for more time, then I'm okay for more time. Uh, so, all right, let me just, um, so for the con side, um, so my questions are building a little on some of the questions that have been asked before, but, um, you mentioned uh, you're comfortable with the, the current standard for overtime in the United States that applies after 40 hours a week and you want to keep it there. Um, so one of the ways to implement a shorter work week would be to change the, the hours threshold for overtime pay. And so you could say 
not that these companies that really need workers five days a week, they could still have workers five days a week. They'd just be required to pay them overtime. And so it would essentially raise the wages for the workers. So I guess my question for you is, uh, you know, there are arguments against the minimum wage. There are arguments against uh, unions and collective bargaining institutions that raise wages for workers. Uh, you're against uh, shortening the work week. Uh, are you also against other policies to raise wages for workers like minimum wages and stronger unions? And if not, what's the distinction between uh, you know, lowering the overtime threshold in terms of hours and, and some of these other policies. And then for the, for the pro side, if you could talk a little more about, you mentioned a lot of cases where companies voluntarily chose to implement a four-day work week. Um, if you could talk a little more about whether we can sort of uh, expect similar results if there was some policy mandate that then applied to all firms. In particular, Consite has mentioned a few times that, well, there might be some companies that if they cut hours, uh, they won't be able to maintain the same level of overall earnings. And so would we expect the results that you're talking about, about happiness, et cetera, to still apply if workers are seeing a reduction in their overall earnings? Thanks. OK, so responding to the first question, what makes a four-day work week so different from minimum wage or any other kind of policy is how workers will, or the effect it would have on certain industries. Uh, with minimum wage, it's tech, generally speaking, it's a solution you can apply to most industries. With a four-day work week, some industries would suffer or benefit, but suffer a lot more than certain other industries. And uh, so that's a key difference between the four-day work week and other policies. Uh, you asked if uh, we were against uh, unions and minimum wage, and not necessarily. Um, if workers want, uh, if workers want these things, um, they'll ask for them. But uh, there's no like widespread um, like uh, worker demand for a four-day work week yet. So on the question about whether we'll see different um, effects of um, if this was government enforced rather than like voluntarily by uh, companies, well, I think it's a it's a good point and that there might be merit to it if like it's tested. I think um, so far, if if um, so far what we've seen in Iceland, for example, this was a government policy, right? Like the government mandated in the, in the national city government and uh, the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik. And the um, the national in the national government instituted a reduced work week for public sector employees, and it it, it had a um, overall it had no negative no it, there's no evidence that it um, had a negative effect on um, unemployment. And I think um, instituting I don't see like why like instituting it as a policy will make much will have like a negative effect while it's not having a negative effect on firms that are already doing it because it's already an organizational as big organizational challenge for like a firm to um, implement it right even if they're doing it voluntarily and I think that um, at all firms would be able to do it all right thank you to both sides that closes off our 10-minute Q&A section I think we went over 10 minutes by a little bit but you know Time flies when you're having fun and talking about economics, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> All right, we'll open it up to our closing statement, um, and we'll have two minutes for the affirmative, two minutes for the negative. Then after that, um, the judges will go and deliberate, um, and then we're going to have somebody announcing the economic ceremony awards, um, so that will be able to fill your time. So we'll start on the affirmative. Uh, when they step up here, I'll start two minutes. I just want to like to say thank you for staying us through our opening statements, our back and forth, and even giving us some great questions to answer. Uh, our workers are facing so many problems at the moment, being burned out or unhappy or just not being able to plan their life and work at the same time. Uh, now let me remind you of what we've said so far today. History shows that the solution to these problems is a transition to a less hours worked week. 
Workers are too stressed. That stress turns into worse productivity, which just turns into stress, making this endless cycle. Having those extra hours off from the four day work week uh, gives people time to recover and recuperate to make it so the cycle never happens. There are many examples that we've stated from trials or actual imp uh, implementations of the four day work week of showing the positives where even the co some companies decided to keep the system after the trial. We would like to make one point that, what? One minute. Oh, okay. We would like to make one point that they didn't even talk about our stance on the environment and how we have a research paper from here, the Political Economic Research Institute, how uh, reducing hours worked results in lowered carbon emissions. We hope that you can now see that the four day work week is the answer to these problems we face in our economy. Instead of suffering in our 100 year old structure we have now, we should be implementing the new four day structure. That's what humans are all about, innovation. Thank you. Now we'll give the negative a chance for their closing statement. Okay, so just to note, couple of points the opposition has failed to respond to or insufficiently respond to. Number one, the 40 work week is not a blanket solution. Not every industry is going to respond well. Most industries are going to respond very poorly to reduction. Then next point is stress and fatigue. We've shown that or opposition has not established a clear causal mechanism between one, week, one day less and less stress. Next, they fail to respond to our assertions about connections or disconnections between employee and leadership, communication being essential for workplace satisfaction and loneliness. In addition, opposition also failed to respond to the phenomenon of dual employment. That being on the rise, people getting more than one job, employers not knowing about this, and it being a significant issue in our economy. Uh, when it comes to the four-day work week, the high achiever will ignore it, and the low achiever will take advantage of it. Remember that disastrous project in college, the one where the high achievers did 99% of the work while the slackers enjoyed an easy A? Similarly, with a four-day work week, uh, high-achieving employees will keep being efficient and continue getting more work piled on until they burn out, uh, whereas the low achievers will rejoice in their newfound work-life balance for a few weeks until the next new workplace trend surfaces and they feel entitled to even less hours at the same pay. All right, that's time. Yeah, give everybody a round of applause. Amazing. Yeah, I thought that there were really great arguments on both sides. Um, so we'll give the judges some time to deliberate um, while the economic ceremony awards are announced. Thank you. Okay, so it was a really uh, tough choice. You all did not uh, make it easy on us. Uh, we learned a lot from this debate. We really saw that there were strong arguments in favor of uh, the, the, the four-day uh, work week and also strong arguments against. Uh, ultimately, we felt that the pro sign eked it out and, and, and came out ahead. So uh, we'd like to congratulate you on your victory, but uh, the con side uh, really gave you a run for uh, your money. So it was a great, great debate. And I would also like to thank uh, Grace for being such a great uh, moderator. So let's give everybody a big round of applause.